where is it? Assignment. So I've added some more instructions. So let's briefly go through what uh, the first steps are. R read through the instructions. Here you need to write about a tax on SIT. That's a, uh, so there's some ethics thing that we've mentioned at the start of the course, but basically don't do any attacks. <laughs> Just think about them. Design them. And I think you can... There are many simple things that you can think about that you can perform an attack on SIT. So read through that. But don't capture other traffic. Don't look at... Try and guess other people's passwords. Just... Uh, if you want to test something, use your virtual network. Okay? You, you can use that to test some attacks. You have your groups, three tasks. First one is categorizing information systems. So we'll talk a bit about each. And we'll, I'll go through an example of... There, there are many standards or, or guidelines for how to analyze the the security of a system, to look at the risks involved, to classify uh, the features of different systems. And one organisation that creates many popular standards or guidelines is called NIST, the National Institute of Standards and Technology in the US. And they have many uh, uh, documents that talk about ways to make your organisation secure. Okay? Secure information systems. So you'll see many references to NIST documents. FIPS, some federal standard in the US, FIPS 199, SP, some special publication with many different numbers they have. So what your task in the assignment is to first think about SIT and think about the information systems. What's an information system? Think about uh, as a student, uh, the, the different computer systems that are available in SIT and that to use and store some information about students, about faculty, about other things. I'll give you some examples in a moment. Think about those information systems in SIT and then categorise what their requirements are in terms of CIA, your first exam question. Confidentiality, What's I? Integrity. A? Availability. Okay. So the general requirements. We, confidentiality, integrity, availability. Then the next task will be to go through and look at the SIT information assets in the SIT and think about the risks from a security perspective. And there's some methods for doing risk analysis for security systems. And that's what SP 800-30 describes a, a methodology for doing risk analysis. Very complex and long. And then think about some controls to reduce the risks. So we talk about we use mechanisms to, to implement some security controls to reduce those risks. So attacks are unlikely to occur. We can't always remove all risks. We try to reduce them. And there's another document that lists many different controls that are available. I've tried to summarise the, the way to categorise information systems to do a security risk analysis and some of the controls. So of these large documents, which are hundreds of pages long, I've tried to summarise the procedure into this overview which you have in front of you. To make it a little bit easier, let's open up the, the one you have in front of you. this summary of the procedure that you can go through. And I've taken a lot from those documents as well as from the textbook. That's what this is, just a summary from those. Uh, I'll not go through all of it, you need to read it. But the first task, classify the different information systems in SIT. And this is what I want you to do in the next week and submit something in the next week. It's very easy. 
The idea is that we think of an information system like the grading system in SIT. Let's say there's some system for maintaining the grades for all students. Okay. We think about the different types of information in that system. Okay, the list of student names and IDs, the grades, uh, the courses, so the information. And then we think about with respect to CIA, confidentiality, integrity and availability, if that information is compromised in some way, what impact would that have on the organisation? And so what's the potential impact on an organisation or individuals if some security breach occurs with respect to each of these? And we will classify them as either low, moderate or high. That is, if we have some information and someone, it's supposed to be confidential, but someone gets ac access to it, what impact does that have on SIT? Or on the student? That's what you need to think about. And then give some classification. Is it low impact, a moderate impact, or a high impact? And give some description here. Uh, very broad descriptions, but other documents give some more detailed examples. And then we categorise the security for each information type. And let's go straight to an example, which is here. I've done an example. Let's say we have an, uh, a student, some system called a student management system, which contains two types of information, at least two types, grades, and student contact information, like your address, your phone number, and so on. So we say there are two information types, the grades and the contact info. Let's treat them separately. And for each of those types of information, we look at the potential impact if that information is breached in somehow, with respect to confidentiality, integrity, and availability. So with respect to grades, let's say there's a database that stores all, your, all of your grades. What happens if someone gets access to that, breaches the confidentiality of those grades? What's the impact if someone from outside of SIT can see your grades? Okay. So from the perspective of confidentiality, you consider the impact. In this example, I say, well, it's a moderate impact. It doesn't mean SIT has to shut down. It means that someone has seen the grades of the students. Uh, not too bad, but not, not nice, because that information should be confidential because it's private information to you. You don't want to see, or you don't want to be published on the web that you've got Fs in all of your courses. Okay? You, you don't, it can be embarrassing. So you give it some impact, it's low, moderate, or high. There's no one correct answer. I want you to think about the impact. That's if confidentiality is breached. Someone reads the values. What about the integrity of the grades? What if someone can access the database and change the grades? Impact high. If someone can access and change all the grades from uh, F's to A, then that's a very bad situation for SIT and, and the uh, individuals in SIT. Okay, so integrity is very important, so the impact is high in that case. What about the availability of this information? We have a database such that students can access it and see their grades. What if someone does a denial of service attack and means for a week that those grades are not available to the students to access? Inconvenient, yes. Does it mean SIT needs to shut down? Well, probably not. Okay. Making the grades available to people to read, in many cases, is not so important. We usually only need them at the end of the semester, or when you create a transcript, for example. So maybe the impact there is low if the availability is, is breached. So this is the security uh, <coughs> categorization of the grades information. Then do it from other, for other information types, like contact information. All right, it should be confidential. 
But again, if someone reads your, finds your phone number, privacy, not so good. Does it mean SIT is going to fail? Well, probably not. Integrity, what if someone accesses and changes your phone number? Well, maybe not cause any problems. So classification of low. Availability may be low. It doesn't matter so much if it's unavailable for some limited time. So think about the information types and then give some classification of the impact. And again, there's no one answer. People may have different answers and it's okay. That's of the information types. Then we consider the entire information system. The grading system or the student management system includes both the grades and the contact info. So of this student system, we give an overall impact. And the way to calculate it is that we look at confidentiality for each of the information types in the system. And we take the highest value. So with confidentiality of grades, moderate impact, contact info, moderate, therefore the, for the system, moderate. Integrity, for grades high, contact info low, for the system, high. It's, a high. it's the maximum of the values of the information. Saying that for this system, we need to make the integrity, well, if the integrity is compromised for this system, there may be a high impact because it may be the grade information. So we take the highest of these, really. And low and low, of course, produces low here. So that's easy. Once you know, or once you've given some categories for each information type, you can determine the categories for the information system which contains that information. That's your first task in the assignment. And you can read in the assignment instructions. I give a template. Uh, nothing special, but just so you can produce it in some format. So, just an example. Sorry, let's zoom in. Almost done. So this is what you'll submit for task one. For your group, your group number, your names. I just need your first name so I know who's in the group. Uh, then think about all the information systems with respect to SIT. Give them some name, okay, the grading system. As an example, okay, you may give it a different name. Give it a description. What do you mean by this system? What, it, what is it? And what types of information are in this system? Okay, grades of students, uh, student ID numbers. So list the information types in the system. And then for another system in SIT, okay, maybe the payroll system. So there are staff, faculty members that get paid. That's another information system, separate from grades. There's no connection really there. But it's another, other information that's important to the operation of the organisation. What information is in there? Okay, staff contact info, staff bank accounts, staff salaries. That would be in a, an accounting or payroll system. And then do that for others. Websites, servers, uh, different, maybe the library. So different, think of all the information that SIT maintains about you and about employees and list them. Then of all of the information types, you have multiple, categorize using this approach of for the information type, maybe describe it and just give this equation that says confidentiality, integrity, availability and choose an impact. Easy. Low, moderate, high. It's, it's the process of thinking about it that's important in this, this task. 
do it for all the information types. And once you've done that, you determine the categorization for the different information systems, which is just combined from the information types. You take the maximum for each of the information types and you get the impact here. Task one done, if you can do that. I want you to submit by next Thursday your initial draft of this. Okay. So it will not be graded, but I'll give feedback on it if you submit. So if you don't submit, you won't get, well, there will be no feedback on what you've done. But if you submit online, then I'll give some feedback to the class and maybe individually saying, yeah, this is on the right track or this is wrong. wrong. Okay. So just to force you to start doing something. And then we'll talk about task two and task three in more detail. Okay. That will follow on. How many systems? I don't know. How many are there in SIT? Can you approximate? Approximately. More than, f f more than three, less than 20? <laughs> I guess. Yeah. I would think so. Okay. I think you can easily think of more than three. I've given you two examples. Uh, sometimes you can break them into more, more specific information systems. You can think of others, I'm sure. So you, you don't have to get them all, okay? There's no complete set of information systems. So someone may have seven, and someone else may have uh, ten, and there may be some overlap, but there may be some distinct ones there as well. That's okay. But just try and think about different ones. It's a good exercise because it forces you to think about, well, what does SIT store about you in terms of information? And where do they store it? And how important is that information? So think about it from a student's perspective, but also try and think you're an employee at SIT, a staff member, a faculty member. What information do you think that needs to be stored about them? Any other questions? No, this is no. This, this is just a thinking exercise. That you don't need to really know much more than you already know about SIT because uh, I think you can guess that with employees there's some payroll or accounting system. Okay, with students there are well other information systems. Think about websites, servers, things that users access to find out about SIT things that are needed to manage the organization. So it's just a thinking exercise. You don't need any software to do this. Any other questions? OK. That will get you started. Uh, again, read through the rest of the task. But once we get some feedback on task one, then I'll explain further about task two and then task three. We can do it in stages. Uh, the next task two is about risk analysis. So again, read through this overview, the one I've, you've got the hard copy of. It looks complex at the start, but you find it's not so hard. Uh, there's a lot of information in these tables copied from the, the other source documents. Browse through them. You don't need to remember them all. Uh, but it just gives examples. And then we'll explain how to use that. <coughs>